Hello and welcome to Pickleball Therapy, the podcast dedicated to your pickleball improvement. Hope you're having a great week. Just got back from a weekend of a tournament over at uh, Pictona. It's a lovely facility over in uh, Daytona Beach area in, T- in Florida on the East Coast. Fantastic facility. They've expanded from about 24 courts to 49 courts. With a, they got a stadium court. It's just a great place to be. And I had a really good time playing in the tournament. Uh, you know, I felt good playing both days, played men's and mixed. Uh, and I got to see a lot of players who, uh, who I don't get to see all the time. I joke with players that I say that when I go play uh, open play, um, that's the tournament because I get to see a lot of friends and, and, and folks I haven't seen in a while. But what I wanted to talk about is something that arose during the tournament, which is finding that edge. Uh, it's finding that fine line that you got to uh, walk if you want to play your best. And we're going to talk about that in the main section of the podcast today. And I think it'll really help you when you play. Make sure you find the right energy level to perform your best. And then in the riff, we're going to talk about something that is creating a lot of confusion out there, which is the serve rules. In other words, what's going on with the serve rules, what serve rules apply and things like that. So if you want to avoid controversy on the serve rules, and we get a lot of questions about these, you want to make sure and stay tuned for the riff. So right right now, let's go ahead and jump into the podcast. Whether we're teaching, drilling, or playing, CJ and I trust our feet and bodies to only one pickleball shoe. The pickleball shoe made by the experts at Tyrol Pickleball. Tyrol is the only shoe manufacturer that designs shoes specifically and only for pickleball. Click on the link below and check out the shoes that CJ and I trust and try a pair yourself. We'll see it on the court. This weekend, I had a pleasure, the pleasure of seeing a friend, Johan, who's a really good coach up in the Northeast uh, Florida area and the Jacksonville area. And he was talking to me about a concept about basically uh, players finding their edge, you know, or like their, their level that, that's going to make them perform the best. And he used the number 70, which I thought was a pretty good number to use. I, you know, I thought it was a, a good number, a good target number, basically being like 70 out of 100, right? Or 7 out of 10, if you want to look at it that way. In terms of your level of energy and and uh, and you know how how engaged you are and everything, and seventy is a really good number. And you would think, well, why not make it ninety? Why not make it a hundred? And I got a story I'm going to tell you that'll show you why you don't want to make it ninety or a hundred. And also, I have a story to tell you as to why you don't want to make it thirty or forty because both those happened to me during the tournament. And you you'll understand as I explain it to you how being on one side or the other side of that you know nice target of seventy. Uh, can negatively impact your play. So the story begins with uh, uh, my. It's on the mixed doubles. On the mixed doubles day, I'm playing with uh, my friend Chris Cargis, who she's uh, she. Her nickname is the Wall, literally, because that's she's just a wall out there. She's just always, you know, playing at a at a really good level. I would say at 70, she's always right around. You know, she might be at 65, she might be at 75, but she always does a really good job of keeping her composure and keeping her her level uh, pretty constant while she plays. And we started playing. We were playing our second round against an excellent team, the number three seeds, uh, Julie Johnson and Mercha Morario, just excellent players. And we were up seven zero in game one. And at that stage of the game, uh, um, we were firing on all cylinders. And I'm going to talk more about my play than Chris's play because Chris's play is always going to be consistently solid. So she's always going to bring the consistently solid play. What happened in in this game, as well as the games I'm going to talk about in a minute, was that my level of play or my energy was it fluctuated from that 70 or 75 mark in ways that negatively impacted us. So we're playing Julie and, and Mercha and we're up 7-0 and I am I am hitting my spots with my shots. I'm coming in, I'm finishing. It's and obviously Chris is doing her job. Everything's working great. And then what happened was, you know, perhaps it was because we were up so big, perhaps it was just adrenaline, whatever the cause, I got to I went up too high in number, meaning I had been at a nice 70, 75. Again, everything firing really well. And I got to say 90 or 95. What happens there is you start rushing, right? Or at least I started rushing. You start pressing, meaning that you're not hitting the balls the same way you were hitting them when you were at 70. And so now I start missing. I'm rushing my shots. I'm hitting them into the net. Uh, you know, I'm running through balls instead of getting set to hit them, Right. When I was doing the business, right, when I was doing everything at a 70 or 75, everything's clicking. But what happens is we get too hot, right? It's almost like an engine just getting too high, too many RPMs. It's just too much. And what happens is, for me, what happened there, again, I was rushing through shots and not getting set. 
And think about games that you've played where you get that easy pop-up, right? You get that ball that sits up, and what do you do? Crank it right into the net or crank it five feet out. Well, what happens there is you're hitting the shot at 90 or 95 instead of 70 or 75, right, which will get the job done. And so it, that, that game, um, that, that game. well, I'll finish out the story so you know what happened. So we ended up, we had a couple of chances to take game one. We ended up losing game one, 13-11, and the second game, I believe, was like 11-4, 11-5 that they, they took the, the match. And again, they played very well. And teams like that, what, what makes them different uh, than some of the other teams in, in the draw is that they're always going to be consistent, right? They're going to play, play at a certain level, a certain uh, level of intensity. Uh, and, uh, and it's just, you, you know, can, can they be beat? Yes, but you got to take it from them. They're not going to give it to you. So one area you got to think about is your energy level getting too high. But the other thing, the other thing that happened is your energy level can get too low. So what happened was uh, Chris and I played three games on the back draw, and they're 15 pointers if you've never played a tournament. So they're 15, one game to 15, and you switch sides at eight. Every one of those games, we switch sides down. So we switched, and the first game we were down 8 1. We were able to come back. In the second game, we were down, I think it was 8 4, 8 5. We were able to come back. In the third game, we were down 8 2 or 8 3. We were not able to come back and lost 15 12. Now, why were we down at, at the turn every time? Because of my energy being too low. In other words, not focusing well enough, you know, playing, say, like at a 40 or 50 or even 30 in terms of, you know, out of 100 in terms of energy level. Now, once we made the turn, I was able to get it back up to the 70, 75 that I want in order to play optimally. And I was, we were in Chris and I, it wasn't that I did all the work, Chris and I were able to. The reason I'm not bringing Chris up again is because Chris is constant, right? So her, she's not varying her play up or down based on, on the beginning of the game or the middle. She's always playing a nice, constant game. The difference in those games was how I was playing. And at the beginning of the games, my energy level was too low. Right, and then once I rectified it, we were able to fight back. Even on the game that we, the last game, we were down eight two or eight three on the turn, we were able to make it a game and lose fifteen twelve. So we basically went on a ten seven run the other way, right, in our favor. But the hole was too deep. So what you want to do when you play is try and find that nice that nice uh, pace for yourself, that nice energy level for yourself, and work on on getting there and staying there. In other words, not getting too hot. And not getting too cold, uh, it's kind of the uh, the Goldilocks story, right? Find that warm porridge uh, that's just right, and the more you work on it, the more you'll recognize when you're getting too hot. So if you, let's say if you're getting too hot, what are you going to do? Turn around, walk back to the fence, you know, slowly to get the ball. Take some breaths, right? Calm yourself down. That's what I did, you know. I, I mean, it, it, we still were not able to pull out that game, but I was able to at least regulate myself. And the other way, what I did is, you know, what you do is when you're too down. You can jump in place a little bit. Uh, you can, you know, you can kind of do some laterals. You can, you know, get yourself going. However, some people like saying "Let's go," whatever it is that works for you to get you up a little bit. Do that when you're down. Find find a way to get to that seventy, uh, say sixty five to seventy five bracket, right? Sixty five on the low, seventy five on the high, and that'll help you play your best pickleball. All right, in the riff, I want to talk about serves because a lot of questions out there about, you know, what's legal, what's not legal these days based on the serves and the new rules. Uh, you might be surprised as to how little has changed for most of us in our serves, and we're going to get to that. So stay tuned for the riff. Pickleball, like life, has inflection points. Those times when the light bulbs just go on and you see everything better. It's the same with pickleball. Sometimes those light bulbs will go on and you're going to play better. If you're ready to turn on the lights of pickleball, Join us inside the Pickleball system. Class is open for registration. It's only a limited amount of time. I don't know when you're listening to the podcast, so I can't tell you exactly when, but it's pretty soon. I'm going to put a link below. Go to thepickleballsystem.com and join us for our next class. Let CJ and I show you how to turn on the lights. We'll see you in class. All right, let's lay down some foundation first before we get into what I think is causing some controversy or some, not, maybe not controversy, some questions, right, as to, as to what the current rule is on serve, the spinning of the serve specifically. There are two types of serves. We have the volley serve or in-air serve, which is the traditional, and I put that in quotes because it's, but it is traditional, it's the serve that was used most, uh, it has been used for the longest amount of time in pickleball. 
That's the one where you hit the ball out of the air so it doesn't bounce. That one has the three rules, and I'm not going to get into them in detail, but basically as long as you're hitting up on the ball and the ball's underneath your navel as you hit it, you're going to be fine, right? Um, so generally speaking, that doesn't cause a tremendous amount of controversy, uh, but that's, that's an available serve. The other type of serve is the drop serve. So some people refer to it as the bounce serve. It's not the bounce serve even though the ball does bounce because you can't push the ball down. So you can't like bounce the ball like you were bouncing a basketball. You have to just drop the ball. So as long as you drop the ball and, you know, and then, and then hit the, hit the uh, serve, you can pretty much do whatever you want. As long as the drop is legal, you can, do, you can cut across it. You can do anything you want with your paddle um, once you've dropped correctly. So you have those two serve options. But I think what's caused some, some question or some, some doubt out there is, you know, what, what, how do you, can you spin the serve, right? And the, the confusion arises out of the, the, some of the terminology that's used. So there was a serve that was being used, which was a serve that was originally the chainsaw serve, and then people doing it with their fingers, where players were pre-spinning the ball, again, with the paddle or with their hand, and once they pre-spun the ball, then they were hit, they were serving it, and it was creating a tremendous amount of spin after the you know during the serve, right? And so that part of it is no longer allowed. And to be clear, what's no longer allowed is the pre-spinning of the ball, whether with your paddle or meaning like you flick it off your paddle and then serve it, or with your fingers, which is where you basically toss it up or flick it uh, or pinch it so that it basically starts spinning in the air uh, before you serve it. Now that said. You can still spin the serve with your paddle as you hit the serve. In other words, once you've dropped it on a drop serve, or once you've you, you know tossed it in the air, as long as you don't spin it before you as you toss it, you can spin that ball with the paddle. Meaning, like you can come up on the ball to hit tossing, you can come across it to hit uh, like a side spin. And if you're using a drop serve, there's no reason why you can't chop down on it if you want to uh, to try to create backspin. That's your choice. We don't recommend it, but that's your choice. Um, so, you know, in terms of the serves, you can spin the ball. You just cannot pre-spin the ball. So remember that maybe use the, the drop or the toss as your delineating point. As long as no spin has been imparted prior to uh, the ball being hit by the, with the paddle, you can do whatever you want in terms of spinning it once you make contact with the ball. So hopefully that'll help clarify uh, potential misunderstandings out on the courts regarding uh, the uh, spin serve and the new rule that the new rule that's been um, enacted by the uh, by USA Pickleball. So that's this week's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it, and and I hope you can use it next time you play to get that edge while you're playing, and hopefully avoid some serve disagreements out on the pickleball court. If you enjoyed the podcast, please rate and review it. As always, it helps us reach other players. And if you enjoyed the podcast, please share it with your friends. If you enjoyed it, they probably will too. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.